Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tabs Leaf Clover, and today we have another Canon of Design quick tips with the artist Luis Ricardo Valero. So we're going to take a look at this awesome painting. This one was recommended by someone in the comments, and I'm really glad because I've never heard of this artist, and I'm excited to dig into his compositions a little bit more. If you get a chance, check out some more of his art because it's all pretty amazing stuff, and he does compositions as well as Bouguereau. Anyway, let's get into it. So this first one, we're gonna talk about the root five grid he's using. So to find out which grid an artist most likely used is you just go up here and find the dimensions and you're gonna see the pixels or the inches and it doesn't matter what unit of measure, just the pixels in this one will help us out pretty quick. So we just divide the large number, 1380 divided by 1078 equals 1.28 and if you go into the ratio guide in the dynamic symmetry book you're going to find that the root phi has a ratio of 1.272 which is the closest to the image that we're looking at sometimes we won't have the perfect ratio but we got to use the grid that's closest to the ratio that we're looking at so we've got the root phi rectangle and i've just got the mad the major area divisions that just means there's four smaller root phi rectangles inside the mother so right away, we can start seeing things locking into the grid and paralleling the grid. So like this woman's arm up to the thigh, down to her shoulder. You can see this arm. I'm gonna show you how he added lines also to configure the grid the way he wanted to. So we got this leg locking in there. Lots of different things. Look at her hand right here. Look at this arm paralleling. So you, right away you can tell something's going on and part of it is the way he's locking things into the grid. So the added lines, I'm going to show you that. Another way you can configure the grid is if you take this, let me draw this. So this circle is an eye, we call it an eye, and so anywhere there's an intersection of the grid you can plot an eye, you can plot another eye. So these eyes can be connected and then you're adhering to the geometry within this rectangle and you're using the grid to do that. So don't ask me how it all relates mathematically but the way you construct these grids is when you're connecting these eyes together then you're using the geometry within that rectangle. Now it's best to use the geometry of the specific grid you're using. I would say it's more dominant. That's why we call them the major area divisions because they're not broken down further. What he did here though is I'll take these off. So the added lines he used, he used this eye here and this eye up here. Okay, so he used those two eyes, connected the line, and then that gave him another diagonal to parallel the body off of. So this body's paralleling this diagonal here. Most grids you can break down in this way halfway, just like an X here and an X here, and then an X to the center. So you can see how he used this eye up here, and this eye down here, and basically this is just half of the grid. So he's using this diagonal to draw her arm. That's where her arm comes from, the diagonal of her arm. That's how he's using these added lines. So he's constructing the grid further to help him with his composition, but say he can't find the diagonals within the actual grid that he's using, he's able to use some of them, but he needs a few more diagonals to complete his composition. So that's why he's adding these lines. So he's thinking, okay, well, I'll add this, take this one, swing it up there, take this one, swing it down there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add these two diagonals here. That'll help me plot her arm. Okay, that's cool. And then this will help me plot her arm here. So that's how he's using these added lines to help complete his composition. He's configuring the grid in a way that helps him complete the composition. So let's look at also the ellipses. I'll turn this off. There's one big ellipse going around the edge here, the edges to keep the eye circling around the image. So we can see that. The ellipse adheres to the law of continuity, which is a gestalt psychology principle. And if we reduce this, we can see the edge to edge relationships. Coming across here, going down, going around the hand, coming around this torso, around the knee, around this guy. So it doesn't have to be exact. You want to hide it kind of like a magic trick and break it up kind of like a dot-to-dot -dot image. That way it's more hidden from the viewer instead of more obvious. So if he connected each line perfectly, it'd look like an Easter egg or something. You don't want it to look obvious like that. So that's the ellipse. I'm going to look at the arabesque. There's a couple of nice ones coming around here. And we can lower this and see how the edge edge relationships work coming around these creatures in the background around this body and the torso the leg so all these limbs are being used to lead the eye around the image so right here this leg coming around here this arm is paralleling this leg here coming up here this is a really nice one coming around her arm down this arm around the back right here that's a nice one 
And then this one's coming down here, swooping around this arm. So you can see how, just like photographers can use the limbs of the models to direct the eyes and create these edge to edge relationships, movement, unity, all that stuff, that's what this artist is doing here. So it's pretty nice. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is gamut. So these repeating diagonals, that's gamut, and it adheres to the law of similarity, which is a gestalt psychology principle also. Basically just repeating these diagonals throughout the composition will give you a hidden rhythm that the viewer can feel, but they can't necessarily point it out. So we're basically using the diagonals of the grid and also the added lines to repeat these throughout the composition. Okay, the next one we're gonna see is turn the grid off and he's using aerial perspective. So aerial perspective is a, another little trick you can use. Aerial perspective creates a, a sense of atmosphere and depth within the composition. So when the contrast is faded like he has here, it's pushing these characters back further than these high contrast characters here. It allows them to be subdued and let these pop forward, which tells the viewer what area is more important. So that's aerial perspective and that is the analysis for today and that is Luis Ricardo Falero. Don't forget to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below which master artist you want me to look at next and I'll see what I can do. Thanks a lot for the support. I really appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one.